Hey Tiger Teachers! Today I'm going to talk to you about a new tool that we have in the district called ClassLink. The purpose behind ClassLink is to give you and your students instant access to your learning resources. We started looking at this tool in December and it's been a process to get it up and going, but with our current distance learning environment, we see even more how much we need this tool in the district. Um, in our Bright Bite survey, some of our feedback from parents said that the students need their textbooks. Well, ClassLink is going to take care of that for us. Another uh, item of feedback was the parents wanted to see some sort of remote learning portal that would combine all the sites that their student might need to access all of their work. Well, once again, ClassLink is going to take care of this for us. So let's get started. I'll show you the tool. To get to ClassLink, you browse to my.classlink.com slash commerce and you will come to this login screen. You will use your network login to access the tool. So for teachers, that's your first name, dot, last name. Don't put your full email address. And then whatever you use to log into your Dell computer um, every day in your classroom. Students will use their six digit student ID number and then their password, which is a five character word and three digit number. This sign in with Google button um, will be active after your first login and we get it all set up. So um, once we get the Google integration turned on, you can use the sign in with Google button instead. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in here. Okay, this is what our dashboard looks like. I have many icons because I have all the icons that I have added for all the different campuses. So you might see some things on my screen that you will not see on yours. But one thing that everyone does have access to, or a few things that you have access to, are Brain Pop. Uh, all four of our Brain Pops are on here. Um, you will see Go Guardian if you are a 3 through 12 teacher. Everyone will see Discovery Education. Everyone will see Text Guide. You will see the Mac, Mac and Via link for your campus. Um, you will see Skyward. So all of the buttons that we push out on our end will be uh, tailored for the campuses, but you also have the ability to add your own apps and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the video. The first thing I want to do is I want to draw attention to, to, to this top bar up here. This is where we are going to start. We're going to start here um, with settings. So the, uh, if you need to sign out, this is where you will go. Um, I recommend that you sign out whenever you leave your classroom. Um, or at least put your computer to sleep because this is the keys to the kingdom, guys. If a student were to use um, your computer and this was up, then they could get into Skyward. They could get into um, the textbook with the grades. They can um, do a lot of things they shouldn't be able to do. So make sure as a security feature that if you leave the classroom, put your computer to sleep or sign out. In this area, it also tells you what your profile is. So um, I'm a tenant administrator. I'm also in the teacher area. And then over here we have settings. This is where you will go to make any changes or update your um, user experience within ClassLink. If you want to add a profile image that will show up here in the upper right hand corner in, in the little circle, you can put that right there. Um, you can change any of these things, but you can't change your email because that is how you are linked and everything is connected in here. Um, you can go to themes. I have pushed out this theme to everyone and this palette color, but if you would prefer to add something else, you can do that. Um, you can also change any of your themes and app size and font size here, but I'm going to show you another place a little bit later that's a little bit simpler to make all these edits and see them um, in real time before you actually like save them permanently. Passwords. 
This is where all of the passwords will be set for all of the different tools. Now, some of these uh, apps, you will see a key beside it. That means that it is a password locker. It will save your password the first time that you use it, and then it will keep it for you to infinity and beyond. So that is kept here. If you need to change that password at any time, this is one of the two places where you can go and change it. I'll show you the other one a little bit later. So um, this is a list of all the passwords and all of the apps that you have on your uh, dashboard. Auto launch, if you have any apps that you want to launch as soon as you log into ClassLink. Um, you can set that here up to five. We'll do that. And there's another place where you can set that. I'll show you that later. Sign in. Now this is where you will go in and connect your Google account. Your LDAP slash Active Directory is set up automatically through um, our uh, ClassLink roster server. That's kind of all working in the background. That's what we've been working on setting up the last couple of months. Um, but you will need to go in and set up your Google account. So when you click here, you will just go in. Um, I don't want to uh, unlink mine at this time, but you will just go in and sign in using your school email credentials. So then you can go in and log in using your Google credentials instead of your network credentials on the login screen. Um, this is also a great thing to link up to access all of your Google files within ClassLink, and I will talk to that a little bit later in the video. And then security. It is recommended that you go ahead and do a password recovery option. You can choose a mobile phone or you can choose a different email than your commerceisd.org email address to do a password recovery. You can also do a two-factor authentication here. Um, you've been through our cybersecurity training. You have learned what two-factor authentication means. It just means it's another layer of security besides just putting in the password. So you will put in your password. It will send you a text message or an email, and then you have to put in um, a code of some sort to access class link. So these are all of the different settings that you can make within this area of class link. If you want to add a tag to any of these tools, you can do that as well. If you want to separate all of your apps by math resources or ELA R resources or um, planning resources, you can do that there. There's also a search button. If you get just a ton of apps here in this area, it might be a, it might be hard to find them if they are all in just one straight list. So you can search them right here. There's also a notification se section. This is where ClassLink will send you notifications for upcoming trainings. This is also a place where district administrators can send out notifications to you. Um, so check your notifications if you see one showing up right here. Edit mode. This is where I recommend that you go in and make any edits to your dashboard instead of over here, only because it's a little bit simpler to see the changes as you go. So let's start, um, let's start here at the add a folder. You can add a folder. I'm gonna call it brain pop and I'm gonna color it orange just like Moby. And if you have a, a hex code that you, you want to use, um, so it's precisely the color that you want, you can do that. That's something that I would normally do. But as you can see, I have a folder created here. Okay, so then I'm going to grab this brain pop right here, brain pop ELL, and I'm going to put them in the folder. To wait till they get small. Just took it a second. There we go. So I can add all of my brain pops in there. I can also right click on any of these icons and I can add it to a folder that way, which might be a little bit simpler, it seems, than waiting for that image to shrink down and fit in there. And so that is how you make a folder. You can also right click here 
on your uh, dashboard at any time and you can add a folder that way. Okay, if you decide that you do not want the folder anymore, you can right click on the folder. You can remove the folder and when you do, it will delete the folder, but it will put your apps right back here on the dashboard. As you can see, these are locked. These are district added apps, so you cannot delete them from your dashboard. Okay, so we added a folder. Now over here at theme, you can choose classic, primary, or professional. Classic is what is given to you originally. You can also choose primary. This is really for the littles. It makes the icons really big plain background, um, so that is an option. Or you can go to professional, and it just kind of puts everything um, in the middle, but it also puts all of your, um, your bar here on the side, along with any icons that you have here on the bottom. It gives you links over here on the left-hand side as well. As you can also see, my edit mode buttons went from up here at the top over here to the left-hand side. So just for training purpose, purposes, I'm going to go ahead and go back to classic. Okay, next up, you can change the app size. If you like the way it looked for the littles, if you're thinking, yeah, it's for the littles, but I could really use that in my life um, as an adult, you can change your app size to large, or you can even make them smaller if you really want everything to fit on the dashboard a little bit tighter. I'm gonna go ahead and move back to default. Font style. You can change it from having kind of a smoky background to just doing a plain text with a slight shadow. Completely up to you how you want that to look. Palette, you can change the color palette. Um, I have pushed out this dark gray. Um, as you can see, it makes this bar at the top gray and also this key gray. But if I wanted it to be orange or any other color, it'll change the bar, it will change the keys as well. I just like gray. And custom wallpaper. As you can see, I have pushed out a Commerce ISD digital learning background. If you would prefer something else, you are more than welcome to change it. They have an extensive library of, of high quality pictures for you. You can also choose a custom one if you want to upload one of, of your own. Or if you just want it to be just a solid plain color, if less is more for you, then you are more than welcome to change that to just a um, plain background color. Okay, so that is a little bit about the top bar. Um, oh, open app library. Forgot about this, guys. This is like everything I think you would need to teach ever in one place. Okay, this, this app library has over six thousand different links to learning websites. So um, anything that you might want to use in your classroom, you can do a search. Um, all of these are in here um, alphabetically, uh, start, starting with numbers, and then they also have um, app types over here on the side if you would rather um, search by what you teach, okay? You will also notice that we have a student app library and a teacher app library up here at the top. Um, I have not completed filling all these out, but I'm going to put some apps in here for our students as a suggestion, and then teacher apps in here as another suggestion um, for things that we use here in the district. If it's something that we pay for, you will see it um, on your screen. But if it's something that is recommended, then you will see it there in the teacher app, app library. You can also add your own app. If there is a website that you um, connect to all the time and it's not in the app, app library, you can give it an app name, you can put in the URL, and um, it'll actually give you an, an image to choose from here, or you can upload your own icon for that app. Okay, this um, is also a menu bar that will give you all the links to everything over here that's on the bottom bar. So um, just know that that is there as well, but I will go into all of those buttons um, here in just a minute. Okay, so that is a little bit about the top bar.
about the middle section um, here with our apps in the dashboard. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of different apps. Like I mentioned earlier, some are campus specific, some are not. But if you right click on any of the apps, you can set them as an auto launch. So remember, you have up to five apps that you can set to auto launch when you log into ClassLink. You might want that to be your uh, Skyward students for your grade book. You might want it to be your um, your online textbook, McGraw-Hill or HMH or Pearson. Um, you can also add that app to a favorites area if it's something that you use a lot and you want it to be found simpler. You can add them to folder. You can do the app tags here or up here edit the password for it. So this is probably a simpler place to edit the password on an app if you change your password than up here in the settings because it's a little clunky. You have to do a couple of clicks and then you have to scroll and find the app. But right here, it's just that app. It's right click and you can edit your password there. Um, you can also add apps, add folders and change backgrounds in this space as well. Okay, as you can see, um, some of our um, curriculum apps are in here, and these are going to be auto-rostered, which means that when students um, enter the district and they register um, in the office in, in Skyward, it will automatically create them their Google account, it will put them in their Google Classrooms, it will put them in your classrooms here in ClassLink, and it will create some of their accounts and McGraw Hill is one of these. So I have never gone into McGraw Hill ever and entered a password. Um, ClassLink just knows that I am, that I need McGraw Hill, that I'm an administrator and that I need to go to this part of McGraw Hill. So I don't have uh, teacher content, but I do have the administrator tools. So um, you will be able to do this as well along with our students. And I'll show you the student side here in just a little bit with one of my own personal children. So um, like I mentioned, you have complete control in here, guys, to make this your own. Move apps around, create folders, add personalized apps, make this truly a hub for your classroom. And I ask that you model this in your classroom and really use this to start your lessons um, and let the kids see it on the board because um, they have the same access you do. It looks the same and acts the same and they can truly make a hub for their digital learning as well. Okay, now we're gonna move down to these buttons here at the bottom. I have five buttons, you have three, um, but we, we have the same functionality as far as the My Files go. This is one of the coolest features of ClassLink that we didn't even realize we were going to have until we signed up. So it, it opens a new tab, as you can see, to get to your files. Within ClassLink, you have 10 gigs of storage. So, you know, we have our Google Drive, which we already connected earlier. Remember up here at the top with our picture, we connected Google Drive so we can see that there. But you can also add um, that drive here. If you have a personal Dropbox that you use, guess what? You can connect that there. So um, you have some great, great options here to see all of your files in one place. You have your ClassLink drive, which is empty at this time. You have your school network, guys. You have your H drive, web-based. You don't have to go in anymore on your Dell. You can use your Chromebook. You can use your iPad. You can use your MacBook. You can use any other platform of computer to get to that Windows-based school network. So that is so cool, I think. So my my home folder has a lot of my kindergarten teaching files, and um, I don't really go into those much, but now I have access to go in if I need to get something, and I can move it to other places if need be. So that's pretty neat. I like that option. Google Drive is your, is your school, and then Dropbox. But within ClassLink, guys, this is kind of like one of the neatest things I think that we have access to is we have access to, um, hold on, I gotta go to my documents first. There it is. We have access to 
Microsoft Office. So we can get to, we can create a Word document, a spreadsheet, or a presentation within ClassLink that will be similar to an Office 365 web-based document. So where you may not have been able to um, access or open or create a Word document on a Chromebook or on a MacBook before, you can now do that within ClassLink and it'll store it in ClassLink and then you can access it on any device um, anywhere. So I think that was pretty, pretty neat. So one of the neat things um, within ClassLink is the ability to star documents. So I can go into any number of these different platforms and I can select a favorite and then it'll show up here in my favorites area. Also, this search feature over here, it is not restricted only to the drive that you are in. So I can type in welcome, which will find this but I can also choose to search everywhere. Go. And as you can see, it is searching not only my, my class link drive, which I have selected here. It is searching my school network files. It is searching my Google Drive. And it is going to search my Dropbox as well. So that is a great way to search and find everything that I need. So let's say that you are working and you accidentally close out this tab right here, but you have this one and you're like, oh gosh, how do I even get back to my dashboard? Where are my apps? I don't know. You can click this little Easter egg right here that they have hidden and it will take you back to my apps. Okay, so that is just a little bit about our drive. I hope that you use it. I hope you think it's as neat as I do. <laughs> I think it'll be a great way for you to manage your classroom, not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom, at home, and our students as well. Our student side. So if you happen to just Google search ClassLink, this is what you are going to get, a generic ClassLink login page. Remember, you have to go to my.classlink.com slash commerce. Okay, so on the student end, remember that they use their six-digit student ID number to um, log in with their username and then their password is their five character word and three digit number that they use to log into the Chromebooks or to log on to the computers in the computer lab. Um, that is the same password for everything. So I'm going to click sign in. Now the students three through 12, when they log into the Chromebook, this is going to be what auto opens for them. So when they log on to the Chromebook, just like they normally would, um, we are going to set it to where this page pops up automatically. So it will have all of their learning apps right there for them. So this is Gus, um, a, a, a high school student. So these are the links that he sees for the high school. And I want to show you what it looks like um, when using one of our curriculum pieces that just auto rosters and creates his account for him. So I'm going to click on the McGraw Hill link here. And as you will see, it's kind of going through some verifications, logging him in, and then it's going to take him to the main um, page for McGraw Hill will it, where, where it shows all of the textbooks and resources that he has a access to based on his schedule. So I have gone into our roster server and um, linked all of the curriculum pieces with the classes. So if there's any time there is a student who is not seeing what they should see, let me know and we can double check their, um, their schedule and make sure that I have them in the correct classes and it shows that he's linked to Commerce High School, Tyler Kilgore. And then it's going to show the one textbook he, he has this year, that is uh, McGraw-Hill, which is his chemistry textbook. So I can click Launch as the student, 
and I can look at any part of the textbook I want to. Um, so if a teacher assigns a certain chapter to read um, or something, they can access it through here. But um, there is also the ability to create classrooms and things within, um, I think all three of our textbook publishers, McGraw-Hill, HMH, and Pearson, but those um, trainings are not going to happen right now, obviously, um, but those will happen later in the school year, and they actually have each one of the publishers has great uh, training resources and videos on their websites to learn more about how to use the textbooks in your classroom. So on the student end, um, you can see his backpack as well. So it'll show the classes that he is um, registered into for this current school year. So there's all of his classes. It tells him uh, which classrooms he has access to the different um, apps in. He can um, click on a teacher, no announcements. He can see the apps that he has assigned for this classroom. You as the teacher can go in and assign applications that you will use in your classrooms a lot. Um, so you not only have them on your dashboard, the students will have it on theirs as well. So I'm going to go back to his um, main area here. And then he also has files. Um, so he can access his Google Drive here. He also has a 10 gig um, class link cloud drive he's i have not set up his <laughs> his google for him but um he also has access to the um area where he can create a a word excel or powerpoint presentation as well so the students not only can do the googly things um if there are some classes that require um certain tools which i understand within word excel and, and powerpoint that they are um they have access to that as well on the chromebooks or remotely um, and then I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to show you he has his own analytics section as well. I have used him as an example a couple of times, so he may have some analytics that populate for him, but it'll show his click by click um, the things he is using. And this is what you will be able to see um, yourself as well. Um, the things that he's done, you can go in and see what he has clicked on. Oh, and there's his, his information as well. Okay, so that is just a little bit about um, what the students will see on their end. My plan and goal is to create a similar training uh, like this for the students. So it'll be something that um, I can create, I can share with the district, and then um, we can decide which classes will do the class link training within um, all you do show the video. So um, we will flesh that out a little bit more once we get into the school year, but this is something definitely that our students need to be, be made aware of within the first week of school. Well, so at the very bottom of the screen, there's also what's called the teacher console. And that teacher console gives you the ability to look at your classes. This is through the roster server, which makes it really simple to just look at your class for your um, life, your English. When you click on the application, or sorry, when you click on one of the classes, it's going to show you um, the applications that have been added, as well as any students that are a part of that class. When I click on apps, I can add a brand new application. Now that's going to open up a library that is set by your uh, district admin. So that way you can then add whatever application you want to that class. That application will appear here in that section. Now the other thing that you can certainly do is that on your dashboard, this looks very similar to what the student sees. Every single student that has any of your classes, their icons, the icons that you have assigned to them will appear over on the right hand side. So that way you they will know um, what application to do. You can also use it as a visual reminder. Hey, today we're going to be using this application. They come to their backpack and they can click on it. Their backpack, by the way, looks exactly like this, but it says my backpack. Now, 
The other piece that's very important here is that you can also look at the analytics. This is your personal analytics, so it's a pretty straightforward piece that you can do. I only have one login today, just today. But as a teacher, you also have the ability to look at the um, student's analytics as well. So if I were to go to the class and students, I can look at their analytics over on the right-hand side and see if they've logged in, what they're looking at as far as the app summaries, and any additional information that you may want to know about them. 